The rap industry has always had its fair share of gun and gang violence as far as back in the early 2000s. I mean, even 50 Cent got shot nine times. However, unlike in the early 2000s, the rivalry and gang violence in the rap industry today has hit their peak. It got so bad that rappers would prefer to pick up a gun to battle than pick up a mic to rap their beef out. Sadly, that has led to many rappers getting caught lacking, and unfortunately for some, they couldn't escape with their lives. Keep watching till the end of this video to see rappers caught lacking. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. Jade Youngin Rapper Jade Youngin was caught lacking right outside of his home, but unluckily for him, he could not defend himself. According to reports, the Louisiana rapper was ambushed by some gangsters. On the fateful day of the tragedy, Jay was with his father, who was also shot during the incident. However, his father survived and gave an account of what happened to himself and his son. Jay's father, Kenyatta Scott Sr., revealed that on July 27th, they were enjoying a little father and son moment outside of their home, where they sat, talked, and shared some drinks. However, their moment was soon cut short when three gunmen showed up and shot at him and his son. According to him, Jay was shot five times. Kenyatta also shared that while they tried to run into the house, two more gunmen showed up from the side of the house. It was a classic ambush that neither of them saw coming. However, Jay's father could shoot back at their attackers as he was armed. Sadly, it was too late for him to shoot back. On getting to the emergency room, it was discovered that Jay De Youngin had suffered at least eight bullet wounds. Unfortunately, he couldn't survive the tragic incident. His father also sustained some gunshot wounds and luckily for him, it wasn't as severe as the wounds his son suffered. He spoke about the death of his son in an interview where he said that he believed whoever had killed his son was jealous of his success as a rapper. J.D. Youngin didn't have any enemies, according to his dad. His father doesn't think the shooting was gang-related. He was a good, humble, and respectful kid, Kenyatta Scott said. Gunu DMV rapper Gunu's death was just as tragic as every other rapper's murder we've seen on the news these recent years. However, Gunu's passing was even more sad because it was a mere robbery that escalated for no reason. People have, however, come to believe that there may have been some gang influence in the murder. The rapper was on Instagram Live talking about a rival op shortly before he was robbed and assassinated on the sidewalks of his own apartment. At about 5.30 p.m. on March 18th, 2022, cops responded to reports of gunfire on the 3400 block of Walters Lane in District Heights. On getting to the location, the cops found rapper Gunu with a bullet wound to his back. Although they immediately rushed him to the hospital, the sustained wound was so critical that the rapper couldn't pull through. A witness informed the rapper's family and shortly after, his sister came running to the crime scene alongside her mother. They were told that he had been robbed and that his watch and his chains were taken. According to witnesses, the rapper didn't make a fuss over giving them his chain and watch, but after he gave up his belongings to the robbers, they pulled the trigger on him when he turned his back. The attack on Gunu's life was traced to the Instagram Live video he made earlier that day, where he called out his rival, Maryland rapper, Q to Fool. The two rappers were locked up in the same prison and never really got along during that time. Gunu had tried to clarify some issues between the two of them on his Instagram Live, but he seemed disrespectful to Q to Fool in the live video. Like many other similar shootings, Gunu's killers have not been found. PSO Emmett Once again, another rapper was tragically caught off guard while returning from his friend's funeral. Memphis teen rapper PSO Emmett, short for presidential shit only, was at the funeral of his close friend who was shot and killed by their ops. Sadly for PSO Emmett, that fateful day played out just like the classic movie Death at a Funeral. Here is some backstory of what made things go south for PSO Emmett, his friends, and his family. At only 16, PSO Emmett managed to become a popular influence in Memphis, 
as he released multiple music videos that fetched him millions of views. PSO Emmett's music portrayed senseless crimes and gang violence in Memphis, and the crucial way of life in one of America's most violent cities. His music videos visually represented what he rapped about. However, as much as he portrayed the lifestyle of a gangster, PSO Emmett missed every gangster's first rule when he shared his location on social media. Before his friend Jamaico's funeral, Emmett took to his Facebook account to write, at kidnap yo mammy, I couldn't make it to you today cause this wreck, but I swear I'm not gonna miss tomorrow. I'ma pop my shit tomorrow for you, thug. And when the day of the funeral finally came, he also posted, Lil Co lives on, we finna pop it for you today, gang. And that was the last media post PSO Emmett ever made. Just like he said, he made it to Jamaico's funeral. Shortly after the procession, PSO Emmett's cousin, PSO Dayday, took to his Facebook Live to record a video of the guys leaving the funeral home. Unfortunately, the live video was the last time PSO Emmett was seen alive as shortly after, they were attacked by shooters who took his life. It was unsure if Emmett and his friends were ready for the attack, as PSO Dede was heard saying on live that they didn't have any guns on them. Bullets hit both PSO Emmett and his cousin PSO Dede. When he was rushed to the hospital, PSO Dede was in critical condition with multiple wounds from the attack while PSO Emmett, on the other hand, lost his life on the scene as the bullets went through his head. PSO Emmett's passing was tragic indeed, as he was out to bury his friend. His mother was also at the church with Jamaico's mom when they heard gun sounds in the area. Being in the medical field, she rushed out so she could help anyone who had been injured. On getting to the crime scene, she saw her own son's lifeless body with his brains up on the sidewalk where he lay. Indian Red Boy. On July 8, 2021, at about 4 p.m., Hawthorne police received reports of gunfire at the Active Estates apartment complex. On getting to the scene, they found the lifeless body of rapper Indian Red Boy in the front seat of a vehicle with bullet wounds on his face and chest. Indian Red Boy was on an Instagram live video with his friend Baby Capone when his ops spotted him and opened fire. While on the live session, Capone and Indian Red were laughing and sharing jokes just a few seconds before at least 12 rounds were fired at Indian Red, hitting him on his face, neck, chest, and head. Do you think these rappers were killed due to gang violence in the rap industry today? Which of these rappers did you listen to? Join the conversation and let us know in the comments section below. That's the end of today's video, guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for more content. Also, don't forget to smash that like button and leave a comment down below. Thanks.